So who wants to see Gaia 2? I'm going to fire up the early access build. This is the same build that's gone out to everyone uh, today. And uh, I'm just going to start a new project. I'm going to make a bunch of nodes to show you some of the new tools. So I'll just right click and type in slump, craggy, and um, sandstone. With this new chain creation, if you know a bunch of nodes that you want to create together, Guy will just make them for you. Let's go look at this. This is the shape that was just created. And let me change the rendering mode so we can see it better. And this neutral lighting. Oh, that looks cool. Let me just make the resolution bigger. So I just took a simple slump node, which is a, a very mellow landscape, and then added the new surface node Craggy to it. Craggy takes the whatever uh, terrain that you give it and then turns it into this rocky landscape. Uh, believe it or not, this is still a height field. If I zoom in, you can see all the different uh, little hoodoos standing out. So this is what Craggy does. Uh, and this is part of our new surface node collections. Their job is to preserve the shape and volume of the incoming node, whether it's procedural or hand sculpted or however, and then give it a new flavor. So here we have our um, rocky landscape and then sandstone is giving it this little extra crinkly flavor here. Uh, might be a bit hard to notice here. So let me just make a new slump and just sandstone. Um, and this I'm creating with the new short codes that every node gets. Uh, so this, and I'll switch the rendering mode again so you can see. So this is the basic slump, and this is what sandstone does to it. It adds really delicate layering to all of it. But it doesn't need to be uh, delicate sedimentary layering all the time. Uh, let me uh, make this a bit taller. Let me get a different seed. So. There, we have this slightly taller slump. And here, you can see uh, it's creating this nice um, uh, terraced landscape that's not so even. Uh, if you've been to any sandstone, deserty environment, then you'll know that this is very typical of um, sandstone environments. Now, let's make this more iconic. So I'm going to increase the spacing and I'm gonna add some chaos to this. And what the heck, let's up the iterations. Finally, I'm gonna increase the intensity of every single iteration. So there, and that turns it into this really nice, rough, sedimentary uh, surface. And so this is part of the new offerings of the surface nodes, which lets you quickly transform any surface into a new surface. And if you really want to preserve the exact volume, this has an incise option. So it'll actually do the volume preservation inwards so your volume is preserved perfectly. Now, I want to erode this. And so that's where our new erosion comes in. So I'm going to drag out and create Erosion 2, which is the working name of our new erosion. And you can see it's already applied this, even though we're at 2K. It's pretty much... Um, I guess you'd call it real time, although I don't want to use that word. It's just been thrown around so much, it's become kind of meaningless. So yeah, it's fast. It's almost instantaneous. Um, even if I increase the duration all the way to maximum, you can see it just works just as fast. And this is still not using the C GPU. This is still on the CPU and it's still this fast. It'll be just you know as fast, relatively speaking, when you switch it to 8K or 16K. Um, anyways, speed is not the point, quality is. And one of the big, big things that we go after with erosion, uh, more than just uh, uh, you know realism of shape is also realism of process. And one of the things that we, we've always found wanting in CG erosion has been deposition. So we have all this really cool cutting of material, but where does all that go? So in this version, we paid even more attention to what happens to the sediment discharge. And so here you'll find a whole group of controls for that. So there are three kinds of sediments and you get to control how much and at what angle they start depositing. So it may sound a bit complicated, but it's really cool and simple. So let me show you. I'm just gonna increase the coarse sediments. 
And there you go. You just have a lot of coarse sediments everywhere. So you have down cutting and you have this. And this is what makes drains look really real, not just giving it lots of different grooves. And so if we wanted more, um, let's add some bed load. And there we have even more. And you can see how this is carving out a flow path as the sediments go down. And you can already imagine how cool the texturing on this would look. So um, let me reduce the erosion duration and you can see how this is working. And you can see, I, I don't need to apply that much duration anyways. Um, this is already working out quite well. So if I go back to my previous node, it's this, now we have this. This is already a pretty cool looking terrain right there. Um, now let's take a look at what um, this erosion can do when I want to turn this into a more mountainous landscape. Well, I personally wouldn't turn this into a mountainous landscape. Um, let's just make a new one. So I'm going to create a ridge. Uh, like all the other primitives, this has been reworked, so it gives better shapes. Uh, let me just fill with the seeds a little bit so I can find something that's more mountainous like this. That looks cool. Uh, let's add a bit more definition to it. And I'm going to use the new modifier stack down here. That um, That's the evolution of the post-process stack that we used to have. And I'm going to um, make it taller, like so. And then now uh, I'm going to add erosion to this. And at the same time, I'm going to amp this up so it really erodes. So now we're getting some really cool mountains. Let's not forget our sediments. So there, we're getting some really cool landscapes out here. Now I want to change the shape a little bit. And I'm going to increase the sharpness and reduce the detail. So what that does is it starts collapsing the peaks a little bit. And I'm going to bring the shape in a little, fill with it to get the right um, ratio that I want. And then increase the sharpness more. I think reduce the duration a little bit. So now that's creating a kind of an alpine shape that I like. Now I think I added way too much detail out here. So that's getting in the way. So I can reduce the definition a little bit. Or I can add one of the new nodes. Um, there's the bulbous. It just makes everything smooth like so. Um, I just wanted to take away all the sharp edges. Then I can erode this. And then I can go down to almost zero shape detail or just pretty much zero shape detail. And now I have really cool sharp mountains with erosion, sedimentation and so forth. I think I can increase the erosion scale a little bit. And I think I can decrease the sedimentation just a little. And like I said, fiddle with the shape. You can find what you like. And you can always add a second pass of erosion to this. So once, you know, uh, not good enough, you can always add more, especially when they're this fast. Now, on top of all of this, let's add a rockscape. Oops, let me hook this up. So this is another one of those surface nodes. So when you apply it to this very realistic mountain, it can give it this amazing broken look to this. I want to switch this to clusters mode. And then now we have these large rock clusters on our mountain. And that's one more way of how you can use the, the surface nodes. And if you're new to terrain design, we have some pretty new, um, we have some pretty cool new toys for you. So if you were to create um, some simple thing like a mountain, uh, which is one of our primitives, uh, you know, you get really cool primitives to start with. You don't have to wrangle a noise into a shape like Berlin or something. Uh, you can have like different styles, like here's the basic or the eroded. So this has erosion built in. 
or the alpine version just this cool alpine mountain but then let's say you want to do some erosion but are not so confident that you want to mess with all the different settings that you just saw all you have to do is create easy erosion and with easy erosion we have done most of the work for you all you have to do is pick one of the different choices now these are just um, temporary stand-in names uh, we're working on all uh, fine-tuning all the different flavors of erosion here so um, you'll get to see some changes over the next few builds but um, here's a little taste so there's the simple erosion and all you have to do is choose how much influence do you want a little bit or a lot and then you can choose a random seed if you want and then let me change this from simple to really strong ancient erosion and then that changes this turn into this or let's say I want this to be rocky then that will transform this terrain into something really strong and rocky like so and then you have all kinds of different experimental shapes you have uh, exposed rock faces uh, with little collapses let me zoom in to show you like so and on and on and on with all these different options you can create a variety of erosions without messing with complex settings and quickly getting the look that you want. Now, I only scratched the tip of the iceberg. Um, you know, these are just some of the really uh, uh, fun, cool new things that I've been playing with recently. So they've been at the top of my mind. But we have lots of other things. We have um, we have groups. We have. Uh, note we have accumulation nodes we have lots of new simulations and um, we have uh, uh, new workflow stuff if you're uh, creating complex pipelines we have of course the, the god mode we have the new um, you know output for unreal like right here we have the unreal node which lets you uh, export straight into um, unreal and use the Gaia uh, Unreal tools to import the entire landscape into UE5 without having to worry about anything. It's just a one-click thing, uh, which we'll do a video on very soon. And then lots of other stuff coming soon. So there are only, you know, 24 hours in the day. So um, uh, keep your eyes out, uh, on our social media. We'll start posting more videos as we go forward. Now that we have bits out in the wild, you'll get to see people make some pretty cool stuff with this and then um, we'll be releasing more and more features and um, soon enough we'll have the final release with a bunch of amazing new tools for everyone to play with so thank you and um, see you soon